Hello, and welcome to NCS first installment of NCS Extra Credit. I'm Jerry Bailey of NCS, and NCS Credit is another way that we've created to try and provide education to the credit profession. If you're familiar with NCS, you know how important we believe education is to the business world. Um, it's really the foundational philosophy of our company. In the world that we deal in, normally UCC filings and mechanics lien filings, it's very complicated. We don't think you can make great business decisions unless you fully understand the processes, the benefits, and the impact these decisions will have on all aspects of your business. That's why we've tried to provide education to the credit profession for years, really, through our seminars, uh, webinars, or just day-to-day -day interaction with various NCS staff people. We really want you to fully understand the law or the code or the guideline that's applicable to help you make decisions accordingly and put yourselves and your companies in the best possible position to get paid. NCS Extra Credit is going to be a little different than anything we've done previously. Um, it's going to be a little shorter and it's going to be a little more casual. It's going to be a series of short videos of uh, various NCS staff members having a chat about all sorts of different topics. Maybe upcoming changes to mechanics lien laws in a given state. Maybe changes to Article 9 of the Uniform Commercial Code. Maybe some court decisions that have come down that will affect the decisions you make in your day-to-day -day business. Uh, maybe it's some trends that we see or just some, some best business practices. But we hope you find it beneficial and interesting. And for our inaugural one, we've recruited Mary Cowan, our president. Hi, Mary. Hi, Chair. <laughs> um, in addition to being our president, Mary is our resident expert in all things Article 9. And there are some changes coming in Article 9 of the Uniform Commercial Code. In 2010, the commissioners proposed these changes that are set to take effect in July of 2013. Um, essentially, what's, what's the nature of the changes? Well, Jerry, the biggest changes that they introduced were to uh, affect the actual filing of the UCC documents. So it's the organizational ID number, the actual UCC form itself, and the debtor name. Got it. So what, I mean, what essentially are the, the important parts that people need to be aware of? The biggest, the biggest change is the debtor name, where if you are a re your debtor is a registered entity, then you need to make sure that you are pulling the organic public records, which is the Articles of Incorporation, to make sure that you are transcribing that name exactly how it's indexed onto your UCC filing. Then the second is if your debtor is an individual, it now clears up the gray area of what is that individual's name. And the um, proposal of the amendments gave us two options. We have alternative A, which means if your debtor has an unexpired driver's license, then you must use the name that's on that driver's license. If they don't, then you can use their personal name, surname, and first name. The other alternate is alternate B, and that says that you can use the driver's license, you can use their personal name, you can use their surname and their first name. You can use any of those. So we have some um, different ways that you can now get that name on the filing. I see. At this point, how many of the states have uh, enacted? You know, um, so far there are nine states that have enacted the 2010 amendments, and of those nine, um, seven of them have chosen alternative A, and two of them chose alternative B. Uh, so in our world, for, for the NCS clients, I mean, what are we advising them to do and what do they need to be aware of? Well, the biggest challenge now for our clients um, who are dealing with individuals or sole proprietors as their debtors is getting a copy of that driver's license. Folks are going to have to start um, instituting a new practice in their credit departments, whether it's their sales force getting a copy of that or they're having the customer send it in, fax it in, there's going to have to be some way for them to, number one, get the name right, and number two, watch those expiration dates, because, um, and then get the renewed license in case the customer changed their name. Good point. All right, and to summarize what Mary said, uh, there's change coming on the horizon, so you might as well start to prepare for it now. Um, as part of your standard operating procedures for your credit departments, if you're dealing with registered entities, you might as well start pulling articles of incorporation. If you're selling to sole proprietors, you might as well start getting copies of driver's licenses. 
Because again, the way you list the debtor name on the financing statement is mission critical to the accuracy of that financing statement and the rights you may have if there's a default or a bankruptcy. So thank you for joining us today. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, we would certainly appreciate any feedback that you might have, bad or good, or any suggestions for future topics for some of the NCS extra credit sessions. Please feel free if you have questions to, to contact us on the phone number or the email address listed at the bottom of the screen. You certainly can contact us through any of our social media outlets too. But thank you and everyone have a good day. Thanks.